you have any kids? Yes, I do. I have eight. How old are you? 28. You have eight kids that you gave birth to? Yes, ma'am. You gave birth to eight kids? Yes. How old are these kids? Uh, uh, my oldest just turned 10. My daughter is seven. Then my next son, he's six. Then I have a set of twins who will be five on the 29th of this month. And my second set of twins, they just turned three in November. Then I have a one-year-old son. A one-year-old son? Whoa, ho, ho, ho. She got eight kids, bruh. Eight. She got eight kids under the age of 10. This is like an announce. Uh, the other woman, like, this is the second woman. The, the one woman, she was pregnant still, but she had seven, and she was about to have give birth to her eighth. I don't I don't know. Her. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, she's 28 with eight kids. Her oldest is 10. So, so, so she started having kids at 18. So... 17 take nine months to get pregnant. Yeah, there we go okay we've heard worse much much worse so here we go i mean we know what she on here looking for love so there's no need to sit here and assume that you know it's you know she, it, <laughs> guess we can't assume anything we don't know she got eight kids maybe she's been married i don't know maybe there, she you know maybe it's all from one guy who knows? At the end of the day, so what? Still don't make it no better because it's the last place you need to be. How are you looking for love? You got eight kids. Who who can help you move the needle forward with these eight chillings that don't belong to this man coming into this fold? Because you look for you go. He, is there a guy, even like a religious guy? Because the people always say there's somebody for everybody. So if you like this religious guy, God fearing, can you step into this situation and? You know, so seriously, eight kids, how much money does he have to bring in a year? This has to be Mr. Six Figures here. And you see how fast the math gets all wonky and caddy wampus that fast. Well, I would imagine she getting that government stimulus package. Oh, her government stimulus, most likely, most likely she is. We have yet to see, but we can assume, no you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her her stimulus package uh, via Uncle Sam and them folk most likely very very generous, but we gonna see. Let's see. You know, y'all know what this sound like. It sound like your stereotypical train wreck that that be on Kendra, but we don't know. You know, maybe maybe there's hope. Y'all like hope. Let's see if we got some hope. All about the same man. Uh, uh, six of them are, and the other two have another dad. Okay, so. You had a baby a year ago. Yes. So the okay, okay. So tell me, you said six of them are, and then which two have a different dad? Um, my second son and my daughter. The second. Okay, so let's start. The one-year-old, the three-year-old twins, the five-year-old twins. They all the same father. Yes, and my oldest. And, and your oldest at ten, and then y'all took a break. Yeah. There we go. I hit on this last time. I hit on this. You did. Seriously. You there did. Are worse than death. It's yes. Yeah. Here we go. We on track now. We know exactly what we're twerking with here. This is a hyena mercenary general status. She out here looking for love. She's here having these drawn out 10 year relationships, but in between get knocked up by other dudes. That's amazing that's amazing and 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 looking for some sick pot of gold on the end of this tainted rainbow you done drew up how <sighs> terrible no no shame no mercy on this one him well how can, how can you because here's the thing they'll make the argument listen to me now they'll make the argument saying i was in a relationship with this guy you know I keep giving him chance after chance we was trying for 10, 12 years, but we'll withhold the, the truth that within those 12 years, you had had two other kids by two other guys. 
And the situations don't be clear cut and dry. It ain't like it just, went, oh, it happened. Everybody got money. Resources is thin. People is fighting, scratching like dogs at each other. This is these situations be straight world star. The the, the baby at the uh, being born at the hospital got two to three dudes there sitting there waiting to see who. Stop. It's y'all know it'd be sick. Windows getting busted out. Probably people getting shot. The de- they be leaving out the details and it's for a reason. Well, listen, I'll say this. The hell with her. <laughs> Men, brothers, I done said this. This is when we come out with these commandments, this is going to be on the chart. There is no way you have a kid by a woman. Y'all separate for whatever reason. She has a kid by another man. And then you go back and have a kid by this woman. If you the hit dog, you the hit dog. But I do not agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that's foolish. Because why would you do it? You got to ask yourself, why? How do I value myself? You know, we didn't work. We had a whole kid or two or three, whatever y'all doing. And then you leave. She go have a kid by a whole nother man. Do you value value yourself so low that you say, you know what? It ain't nothing to go behind this dude. She done already gave her womb, her whole womb, her most precious commodity to a whole nother man. And you say, you know what? What you think? What you think you're doing, Nug Nug? Because that's you. What you think you're doing, Nug Nug? You think you're going to reclaim your womb? No, y'all sharing that womb. All right. Seriously. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> There's we get into more detail about this stuff, and it's gonna be on our Patreon page. Cause there's a lot of stuff we can get real granular, but we can't on here for you know for YouTube's sake. But <laughs> but yeah, nug nug, stop that. You can't reclaim that wound. That wound ain't yours no more. That that wound belonged to the streets. It hurts me. Yeah, like I said, she on here with eight kids looking for a man. Let's see which rabbit hole she about to go down. Cause now she done laid out a whole field of rabbit holes. Let's see which one she about to. Okay, so why are you not with the man you had a baby with one year ago, three years ago, five years ago? Oh my god, Kendra, that man is one year Drug problems, um, abusive. It, I tried to stay, but it's, it just didn't work out. But you had how many kids by you had six kids by him? Six kids, yeah. And then between our oldest son, there was a break where I had um, my six year old son and my seven year old daughter. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go back to him, try to give it another shot, but it just wouldn't work. So I I understand you're saying it will work. Man, so she just confirmed everything we just said. Like I said, she a whole hyena. Y'all 304s is full of ish. Y'all full of ish. Y'all liars. Ain't no truth in y'all. This is so bad. She telling this story all nonchalant like she ain't a whole harlot. Like she ain't a whole common woman of the night. Now she just talking like, yeah, you know, we had a break and then my oldest came about. You out here giving that thing up like you don't want it no more. Tell that part. <laughs> Seriously, stop. She y'all can't be having these three or four conversations like you know, like y'all just talking about going to the grocery store or normal woman or wife happenings. No, this is three or four behavior. This is mercenary, harlot, common woman behavior. City girl behavior. I'm trying to make sure y'all get the drift. He has, he has All right. Problems. But, you know, I like to ask the questions that I know men would ask because you're here for a guy. Why did you have six kids for him if he had all those issues? Because I tried to stay, you know, to see if he would change, get better. And I just didn't want to be with nobody else. I was really in love with him and wanted to see him get better. I tried to help him throughout his drug problems. And then his other thing was not having a job. Uh, He's a self-employed barber and that didn't really, never really took off. But I I tried to stay with that man, Kendra, I did, but it just So what was your final straw? Because you had a baby a year ago. So what was the final straw for you? My final straw was when, it's crazy, but my other kid's baby father, he sent um, a picture of his private part to my phone. And I didn't know that um, he did that until I went to uh, sleep one night 
he, I woke up, he was just like, he was mellow, calm and stuff. And I was like, well, um, I forgot what I asked him, but he just like went off. And so I'm like, okay, let me go check my phone. And I seen the picture and I said, oh my gosh. So he packed up all his stuff and he left. And I was texting him. I'm like, yo, like, what's up with you? Like, why are you acting like this? Cause we had previously had sex like that night before. And what baby just, daddy you previously had sex with? The, the one year old baby daddy? Yeah, Which one? Yeah. We don't even know. So this is what I, just to bring this full circle real quick. And that's why I said, brothers, if you have a child by this woman and she go off and have a kid by another man, let it go. Let it go, brother. Because you're going to find yourself in this position. Now the man, you double back. Now you're saying, this is my lady. I took her back from this guy. Now he's sending her Johnson pictures to her phone. You done, you done seen the picture. Now you storming out the house emotional like a woman. Because you shouldn't even be in this position if you listen. We're going to start. Wait till we put out the classes, though. And we're gonna save generations of men. We're gonna save y'all. We're gonna this don't even have to this don't have to be a thing. It really don't. <laughs> my man, my man looked at his old lady's phone and whop. <laughs> it was a picture of a whole nother man's beat. <laughs> Not a whole nother man, the other man that she done had kids with on me. So it's so it's it's so close to home, my man. It's real close to home, all up in and through your home. She said here, and here's the thing, we sit here trying to give advice to sensible men on what not to do and not get engaged in this type of madness. But she out here <laughs> sacrificing her room to nug nug the crackhead slash self-employed barber. Can't keep a job. Come on. Y'all know who this is. This is El Couch El Negro <laughs> in the flesh talking talk about he's some self-employed barber. Come on, man. And here we go. I'm so happy she started to paint this picture of this man because now we can see him in all his glory. He stank. He musty. He got on them black air forces. He got on the, the white leg jeans. Dang, they look like Jankos. Or he got on some fat Albert, uh, platinum fubu jeans. They still out there. I haven't seen them. He a whole crackhead. She gave her room to a crack cook. Crack cake, nothing, no, no, no. Sitting on her couch talking about he cut hair. I heard giving people uh, alopecia and, <laughs> and things like that. Come on, man. If y'all out there that got y'all hair cut by this couch Negro, how bad she done talked about him? Y'all ripped it. But nonetheless, I've said it before. How can you ladies continue to come on this show and bad mouth? A, a man so bad that you willingly gave your womb to not once, not twice, not three times, <laughs> not four times, however many times, we're up to six with one of them. What are we doing? Who, what kind of man does she deserve? So on the chart that shows you, you know, who your man is, do, 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 do. Couch Negro. <laughs> so I hope I hope all the Couch Negroes is out here watching. I hope y'all are out here watching. Cause here's y'all next lady. She she already six deep. So you know, you know, she ain't no celibacy, you know. It just don't go through her phone. Cause most likely the last dude went through her phone and got his got his ego <laughs> crushed. <laughs> she said he slipped in that phone. He looked in the phone, he looked down. He said, this is a boo. And he was storming out the door. That's what you want, bro? That's what you think about? <laughs> That's messed up. Uh, 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 there's things worse than death. This is a clear-cut example of what we are talking about. There are instances, life, lived experiences, worse than the idea of dying. And this is one of them. This is some black... Peel madness. The, the moment, the moment he whipped that phone open, next thing you know, straight to the grill. And so, um, when he t he, I called him while he was on the road leaving because he lives in uh, I'm from Philly. He lives in Philly, from Philly too. And so I was like, yo, like, what's up with you? Why'd you leave like this? He was like, um, yeah, the stuff that I seen in your phone. Check your phone. I was like, oh. 
Wow. So that was. So was it fair to say he left you? You didn't leave him. No. No, but I we had we was in Jacksonville, uh, Florida or whatever, and we had like a big argument because he always accused me of uh being with my other baby father. My other baby father doesn't even know I live in Georgia. He hasn't known that for years now. I've been here for almost three years. And so um, we had got into like a big argument or whatever while we was in Jacksonville um, in the beginning of July. And I was like, you know what? When we get back home, like I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. And then that happened with the picture or whatever, like shortly after we had gotten back. And so, yeah, it was like, it's, it's just done. Uh, that's one of the babies in the background? <laughs> yeah, my one-year-old. <laughs> okay. So, okay. She's really one -year -old. on her trying to date with eight kids. I can't wrap my rhyme. The, I mean, the only thing I see her doing is just, she came on here and fucking cranked the LEDs up as high as she possibly could and sat back. That's all she did. <laughs> like, real talk. She broke the knob off that boy. That is forever on <laughs> She she turned that light on and snapped the knob off and said, "Come on, come on, come on, nug nug all across the leg. Come on, oh, I got eight of them. I'm saying she got eight of them. Eight. I about lost count because I'm sitting here thinking six, but I'm sorry, eight. She had eight children, six by one, and two by the other guys. And those other two, they didn't come at the end. You see, for y'all that ain't keeping up, she got six kids by one guy, the other two by two other dudes." Came in between. You see what I'm saying? So she was, they was playing genital hopscotch and, and you know, stuff like that. It was wild. <laughs> Y'all nasty. Real talk, bro. Like, you can't make this up. Like, she on here, stumbled out and called him. He done, we done moved from Florida. They moving from state. To, how y'all be moving like this with all these kids? That sound like just anxiety. Oh, yeah. I think about that. And, it, and I hope she ain't going to the same hospital with the same nurses that have given birth to all these kids and, you know what I'm saying, to come time to sign the birth certificate. Y'all know y'all be doing some foul stuff. Y'all embarrassing. Uh, y'all embarrassing. Y'all either lying, they sitting there. And you know what? <laughs> Me and my wife just gave birth to our, our last son here. And in the hospital, it's embarrassing. And it's y'all caused them to ask embarrassing questions. They asked us, were we really legally married? And, you know, would I be signing the birth certificate? And, if, and I asked the lady, I said, do all married couples get these questions? And, you know, she kind of blushed because it definitely was a little bit of her stereotyping going on. But I get it. I get it because y'all be lying. Y'all be lying. Y'all some lying nasty mofos, man. Y'all is. So I was sitting there and I realized, I was sitting there like, this is embarrassing. So women like this, she's the reason why men like Gavin and I really don't come across as, as married, married minded, uh, uh, kid loving men because none of you out there messing it up. And, and who's, to say, who's to say all these six kids is he is now? The paternity is up in the air. And that's why men been speaking on them you know, past legislation to at birth. Give every kid a test. Get, let's just get this out the way. Get yeah, everybody, we, all children get a test. Yeah, because we we smoking with cigarettes up here talking about assuming and going along with her lie that all six of these kids. And like you said, if you're a married man, I'm not going to feel offended. If I know this is protocol, I'm not going to feel offended if I have to take this test while giving birth. You, you see, see what I'm saying? saying? I'm not going to be offended. Only people going to be offended motherfuckers questioning shit. There you go, because I laughed. The lady started asking, you know, are you guys legally married? You know, uh, you know, is he going to sign the birth certificate? All these things. It didn't take to the day we left. And the lady had keep saying it to herself, like, you guys are married. And yeah, you can sign up on everything. Yes, yes, you can. They had to convince themselves. And that is embarrassing. But I could laugh it through because I'm aware of the reality. And this is it. She in here most likely going to the same hospital. And and different nug nugs showing up, they clashing in the hallways, most likely. Uh grandma's out there fighting, trying to claim the grandchild. Y'all know how y'all gets down. Bad. And she just sitting there smirking and smiling. She she 28 years old. Damn, that's what I'm so, saying. So, so, and she get coming off. I'll be like, man, I'm thinking she's like 42. This is a young girl. So she's gonna continue getting physical validation 
for some time to come, especially if she's surrounded by, you know, Nug Nug Supremes, as she appears to be. So she, there's a chance that she can pop out a, a, a litter of 12. I was about to say that, at least 10, at least 10. By the time this all said and done, they are giving man, 12 the easy way. I don't think you get it. Some of these, some of these sisters just they just like giving birthday, and it it be more resources. We've seen it, but it's all bad. It's all damage. Get therapy. And she got two sets of twins, so I, I guess that's in in her gene pool. There, you know what I'm saying? She's not able to spit out quadruplets or some shit. Fuck around. <laughs> By the time she done, she love to have 12, 16 children. So the other child's father, he's not in your children's life. Not really. No. Okay, but he texted you his penis picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His like basically he wants to get back just to have sex. Like he doesn't send me money for the kids or whatever. He doesn't call to check on them or anything like that. So that that's just basically how it is with him. Right. So let me just Nug jump. Nug ain't sending no funds. He not calling to talk. He ain't calling to check on his kids. He don't give a damn about the welfare. Nothing going on inside your residence. He don't call you. He don't text you. He don't check on you. He don't care nothing about your best interest. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he said, I know what I am going to do. I'm going to send you a picture of this meat. <laughs> and want to know why he sent it? Because it was a chance. That your nasty, nasty self was going to bite. You still have yet to show disgust about it. You just say, oh, I can't believe it. You just say, yeah, yeah, he did. And <laughs> come okay. on. Okay, so, so devil's advocate. <laughs> Let's imagine this man's position for a minute, right? He has to be supreme nug nug. This man come in. Well, I, I don't know. I guess he was like maybe the second. I guess she only had maybe one or two kids by the time he got a hold of her. You got to understand. So I don't know his position. Did he feel like, all right, I took her from this man. Now she mine. And then all of a sudden, uh, so it's like Nug Nug Supreme versus Nug Nug OG, right? And they fight back and forth and Nug Nug OG had her. And then Nug Nug Supreme was like, look, I, I, I got her now. And then Nug Nug Supreme come back, and they they just fighting, you know. And and now he like, I ain't take care of them kids. You were supposed to come with me. You went back with him after leaving me. I told you I was gonna take care of that first kid of his. You gonna leave me and gonna have five more kids by him? It, it just turned into a nightmare. So I don't. You know who this man is? All bad. That is sick. This this is this worth fighting over? Sound like a dang on a Dragon Ball Z episode. <laughs> and that's most likely how it went. As Gavin trying to paint out, this was not some clean cut. You know, these happenings were sloppy, messy. There you go. That's the term y'all like to use. This was messy <laughs> as hell. Every time it was messy. Every time. Messy as heck. People, you don't, you don't understand. I would say, you know, people's jobs get showed up too, but, you know, most likely none of these brothers work, you know, being entrepreneurs and all. <laughs> but it was a mess. And y'all be leaving out these details. And y'all want another man to come into this. What are you expecting to come through the door? That's the overwhelming question in my head. What are you expecting to walk through this door and make your situation better not worse and not just sit there and be stagnant because nug nug could definitely come in there and just be around or he can make it worse but make it better no and, and we got to understand we can't sit here and make this a hood normal having children out of wedlock and, and and a lot of us could be the hit dog but that don't make it normal a lot of times people think because you know, it may paint them in a bad light to where they can't say nothing bad about something. No. It, it, like we was on her the other day talking about uh, baby mama, baby daddy stuff, and people don't want to say the word. But no, it's a derogatory thing for a reason. So 
that's just is what it is, you know. Yeah, it's all about crushing these hood norms. You know, like Gavin said, we got to kill the norm of having kids out of wedlock. I had a kid out of wedlock myself. My first child was out of wedlock. But it don't matter. Sometimes we the hit dogs, but we got to know better so we can do better. But we can't keep acting like it's okay. Because I want the all police to come here because ain't nothing wrong with having four, five, six, eight children. But you must be married. That's it. Why? Why should you be married? Because in the best interest of the children, stop bringing these kids into these damaged situations. They end up with damaged kids to grow up to be damaged adults. And then y'all wonder why we have the issues that we are currently having today. It's reasons. Stop being so dumb. Question. Am I allowed to because, say? again, you're here for men, and I hear men talk about this all the time. What would you say to the guy that feels like eight children might just be too much for him? <laughs> oh my gosh, I know. Um and wait, and hold on. And not only are they eight, you have you have two twins that are five, two that are three, and then well, one set of twins that's five, one set of twins that's three, and then a one year old. So you have technically five children under the age of six, and you do have a six year old. Yeah. So they're pretty young. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say to the guy that's cautious because of that reason? I mean, the amount of kids doesn't really matter because uh, they're all well taken care of. And I'm a great woman, despite having so many children and I only have two baby fathers. <laughs> so Y'all have to stop. She going to sit here and say the amount of children don't matter. They well taken care of. It do matter. It absolutely do. Because if I come in here, they are now my responsibility. You are going to look at me as less of a man if I don't take care of your kids and if we serious. So at this point, only thing you're looking for is nug nug. You're putting up that bat signal when y'all do that. But somebody say, do you think eight kids can hinder you from dating? You say, no, that's zero accountability. You can't sit there and say, yeah, I can see how that is. And I know it's going to be a difficult road. And if I, if I find somebody that's going to be happy and I'm going to cherish that person, that's never the answer. This is crazy. Holy smokes. She said the amount of kids don't matter. How can we make that statement true? <laughs> Only way to try to remotely dream and imagine and make that statement true, we must throw in an overwhelming abundance of resources. And then maybe it necessarily does it. But there is no, there is no king's gold here. She is not heir to some oil fields. So, you know, y'all see these them type people and they got six, seven kids. Like you said, they rich. Then, then you know who coming, you know who coming in. The police is coming. Well, it's men out there with five, six kids. Y'all let me, all these men ain't kids. Nick Cannon, bada, 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 bada. Overwhelming resources, as we say it. And she sat up here and just said, I, and I, the amount of kids don't matter, Kendra. And and I only got two baby daddies. What was that? She is so used to lying to people, telling them she only got two baby daddies. Even though we have sat here and confirmed she got three, she still slipped up. Your soul always going to spill out. She's so used to lying and telling people that can't prove it. She only got two baby daddies. She just said it here. And we've confirmed she got three. She done did the math. We done talked about it. But she's so used to lying. I'm keep saying it. She's so here, used to here she go. She did some Braddock hoodoo. Kendra said, "How many baby dad?" She said, "Outside." She said, "My other two got a different dad." She didn't say how. You see, that was hoodoo. Oh, oh. She, they don't be specific and granular. All she had to do is say, "I got six kids by one man. I got two kids by another man." Okay, y'all do this to y'all. You see, I'm saying they try to, they try. I don't know what they do. But it got me because <coughs> I'm saying the whole time thinking there's three baby daddies because she said I got six by one and two by the two kids got a different dad. So that that's how she and that messed me up. <laughs> and it's, it's just walking who do y'all? Yeah, that's what she said. Those, but I, I, no, I don't know. Like you, I, like I said, 
None of it. This is her words. I think it could be up to four or five baby dads. There we, we go. That's, ultimately, that's where we are. And like, she's a, she's a lying three or four not to be trusted. Good. You know what? Go ahead and believe her if you want. Believe her. Believe her that eight children don't matter. Believe her. She only got two baby daddies. Believe her that she's a great woman and all that. She got eight kids, six and under, running around her house right now. Eight. That's nuts. She got eight kids. I'm, seriously, how big is her house? Let's get a picture of how this house smell and all that. Y'all gonna keep it funky today. This is wild. Got it's laundry wild. everywhere, clothes and shit everywhere. You see what I'm saying? Because nothing, nothing in and out. No sane man is going to go into this. And she's trying to just listen how she's trying to justify it. Well, eight kids ain't a lot. That don't mean nothing. Says who? Says who? And I only got two baby daddies. That ain't nothing. Says who? Hood normal. Hood gonna normalize you, baby. They go, uh, the hood normalization uh, re-education camps going around. I don't know parts of it. Y'all ain't gonna throw me into these hood normals. Yeah, okay. I mean, nothing really to worry about. And you've never but been I'm married, married, right? Again. Say it again. You've never been married, right? No, never been married. Okay. I've been engaged twice to uh, my first baby father, though. Okay. And what happened with him? How come you couldn't work out things with him? I told you the drugs, not. Oh, that's the first. Oh, that's the one. That's the one-year-old baby daddy. Yeah. Okay, got you. She got you. So uh, she was engaged to OG Nug Nug. He proposed twice. I don't know. If, here we go. They was engaged. I don't even know what that means in the hood. Did he propose? Did Nug Nug drop to a knee? It's hard for me seeing Nug Nug getting on his knees. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> As Ken would say, was this public? You know, did he take you out to a nice restaurant and everybody cheered and all oh, that's so nice? Was this a public display of affection and love, or or was you a nug nug? You know, chilling on that crusty couch watching some Netflix series, chumming down on a four for four, and say, you know what, babe, we might as well just go ahead. You know, what I'm saying I don't know what wait for. Was it around tax season? Did he say, you know what, we might as well just go ahead and go ahead and, and tie the knot, you see what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying, I, I, you know, we about to come up here a little bit. That money about to come through. So well, we, might, we might as well just go ahead and make this official because I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and here's the deal. And this is not to say that everybody got to go out to a beach somewhere and propose and it got to be romantic. The, what we're saying is y'all got to learn to start keeping stuff in y'all pockets. Quit trying to, y'all be trying to stunt. It's called stunting gone wrong. She, she did not have to say that was unprompted. Y'all didn't, she didn't have to, she had to say, you ever been married? No. But my first baby daddy, we was engaged twice. That was unprompted. Now you crashed that plane. You thought you was landing it. The, the plane was already landing. You're going to pick it back up and crash it for no reason. That was on you. So. Okay, well, let me continue. So. Um, you are this is Cheryl, Cheryl, Cheryl Ann, <laughs> Shirley Ann. Shirley Ann. It's like two. Ann, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Shirley Ann, Georgia, 28, certified home health aide. What is your birthday or zodiac sign? Uh, July 15th. I'm a Cancer. A Cancer. All right, boo. Well, so, what kind of man are you looking for? Um, I want to say uh, an older man, older than me, probably. Um in the 40s at least uh someone that's honest trustworthy we gonna address this right now not now but right now she said older man older don't mean dumb blind you know suffer from you know brain damage that's not what older means because y'all must think that's what it means you know, I want to, and she sat there, her face got all twisted. I, 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 well, older. Because y'all think older means desperate, dumb, desperate. Okay. Would an older man be more accepting of being like a stepfather? Because it's that's generational. So if you look at people, especially this new generation, 25 and under, they ain't with being stepdaddies at all. <laughs> then you got maybe like our generation, maybe 40 and, you know, between 25 and 40. And they like, uh, it got to be the right deal. And then you got the older generation to where they come up under that stepdaddy clause where, so, you know, 
way back, it was an honorable thing, you know. But right now, with y'all hyenas, come on, man. It's not because today's stepfathers are not getting the respect they deserve. And that's why we are against it. Like I said, if there was a thing where, you know, stepdads is recognized across the nation at least once or twice a year with parade and a $5,000 stipend if you registered as certified stepdaddy, then maybe we could consider it for men. But we're not going to sit here and tell men to continue to sit here and lay on these landmines. She said not just men, older men. They're they're old. They at the end of their ropes. They're in their 40s. That's old. You're in your 40s and 50s. You're old. See that? You're like, you can accept my kids. You're an old man in your 40s and 50s. Desperate. You think I'm tender? Because I'm I used to all oh, tender young thing. They know what it is. Y'all all know what y'all qualify for. She dare not sit here and say, I would like a 28-year-old. Because she, I wish Kendra would ask her that. Say, hey, why wouldn't you want a 28-year-old? And she's going to say, oh, well, they immature. This and that. You immature. Which your number woman. one reason, bread. When do men hit their financial stride between 45 and 55? There you Don't go. Man in a financial stride want to be dealing with eight children. Y'all got to start understanding. So you looking for a 45-year-old nug nug, a 50-year-old nug nug? That ain't no better. That's mm -hmm. the worst. So come on, man. Yeah. By that time, by 45, this still nug nug. He more certified like a prison bay. He done been in jail. He probably did a little stretch. You know he what done, I'm saying? He's a couch negro now. He done, he done blossomed. You see what I'm saying? He done blossomed. Yeah. <laughs> the couch negro be coming in on y'all couch. He like a butterfly, believe it or not. The couch negro, he a majestic creature. I like, I like the butterfly. The butterfly get in that cocoon, and they lay in there, and they morph into, you know, the caterpillar turns to a butterfly. When the couch knee girl, he come in there, he just come in this nug nug. See, he come in, he got his he got his PlayStation or Xbox, whatever his deal is, a couple pairs of J's or whatever, and he's sitting there, and you don't know what's going on, but this is this is nug nug in his natural habitat. You don't know a whole transformation about to happen. And he's gonna sit there, and somehow all of a sudden, this dusty, uh, either red or green sleeping bag gonna pop out of nowhere, and he's gonna get in that sleeping bag. Like a cocoon, just like the caterpillar. And when he emerged from that stacking, funky uh, sleeping bag, gonna be couch negro in all his glory, just for you. <laughs> Ooh, El couch negro, El couch negro, and nug nug. They are a nuisance. All right, we're gonna treat them like uh, like like like, uh, like, like, like the nutria, the nutria down in Louisiana. They nutri everybody. You you allowed to shoot them on sight? Oh, yeah, they these big uh, they almost like beavers or something. Oh, oh the okay, yeah, they rodents. Yeah, they destroying up all the land, and yeah, they call the nuisance animal. You allowed to shoot them if they're on your property? That's gonna be nug nug and couch negro here in a minute. So so we are gonna start treating nug nug like like coyotes. You know, you can back attack them as many as you want, no penalty. And uh, couch negro is the uh, nutria. Just delete on sight is for the betterment of the earth, the species, all that. Just neutralize it, neutralize it. And, and we'll talk about it later, but don't talk to it because it will be on your couch eating a sandwich faster than you can blink. And you're like, I don't know how he got in here. Don't let it happen. Not, don't do drugs, drinking, because I don't do none of that. And I've already been with somebody that's had those type of problems, so don't want that. Um, I don't know. That's about it. Just very honest. It has very good communication skills. Okay, what are some deal breakers? Um, definitely the drinking, smoking, um, being inconsistent. That's about it. Do you want? more kids that's funny that you say that because i do actually want more kids <laughs> okay because i only have a daughter so i don't know oh, maybe god will bless me we have seven boys yes ma'am seven boys one girl wow seven <laughs> boys one girl yes okay another girl yes okay does the guy have kids 
Yes, that's fine. Okay. Does he have to be in Georgia? No. No. Um, does he have to look a certain way? Uh, um, yes, I prefer um chocolate men. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Does he have to make a certain amount of money? Um, no, not a certain amount of money. Just have his own income, come with his own everything, because that's another thing. I've always supported my baby father in the past, and I'm just not trying to go down that road again. So on money, on car, on place, and definitely if he has kids, taking care of his children. Okay. Let's Who do talk? Have your own. I I just don't like when they do that. Have your own. Then you'll tell Bob will support my baby father. How y'all be supporting these men? Y'all be having four, five, six, ten children. Y'all talking about y'all be supporting men. Well, shoot. Remember those commercials? Even you could support, you know, one of those poor Ethiopian children back on those infomercials back in the day for like a dime a day or something. I imagine that, that don't cost too much to sponsor. Okay. And that's my point. Okay. So remember, you know, I would have to imagine that beggars can't be choosers. Or am I wrong? <laughs> oh, you're on to something. <laughs> okay. Like I said, I was looking for answers. You provided some sufficient answers. You can you can take care of no pack of ramen noodles, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you buy him a sweatsuit. That that he'll wear that. You buy him a sweatsuit at least once every two weeks. He'll wear that thing eight days. You know, a couple pairs of drawers, couple pairs of socks. What's a bonus? Slide him five bucks cash a day. You know what I'm saying? Maybe give him a, like two or three uh, loose cigarettes to get his day going. You know what I'm saying? So then he could try to establish some kind of ranking in the pecking order amongst his nug nug peers. You know, he don't want to be the first one to bum a cigarette. I will have he to. He can show up on the block. He can show up in front of the bar, wherever, already smoking. They can be like, damn, he got cig having cigarettes. There we go. Let's rewind our memory lane. All right. All right. We all from the streets. So it ain't nothing to be proud of. But I tell you what, a man having a pack of cigarettes in the streets for whatever reason. It's like royalty because Negroes are so cheap. They will not buy a pack of cigarettes. Y'all got to understand. And don't come in here to all police and tell me about your aunt that buys cigarettes. I ain't talking about her. I'm talking about Negroes in the streets. They will walk around bumming cigarettes and, and buying Lucy's. They buying Lucy's all day long. They will walk around just paying whatever, 50 cent back then. It was like 50 cent. I'm sure they like a dollar now. It got to be like a dollar for a cigarette. And you'll go up on somebody or two for a dollar. And guys will simply buy, I buy ice and scratch my hand. Like, why don't y'all just buy a carton or whatever? And it's the craziest stuff in the world. Because you didn't see back then. I don't know if you was for show. Sure. Yeah. Back then we was in the midst of the madness. So we couldn't see it was normal. All that was normal to us. But we had no idea that that was El Couch Negro. And he couldn't simply afford a box or a pack of cigarettes. That was not going to happen. He didn't have those type of resources. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if his if his sponsor, you know, was willing to give him five bucks, you know, I'm pretty sure he short the, the tax on that. I would have to imagine I don't know how much a, a a box or a pack of cigarettes go for, but <laughs> but nevertheless, yeah, Cal's Negro don't cost much to sponsor. Uh, ramen, a PB and J in the morning. Here is so here y'all go. We're gonna help y'all out because y'all ain't gonna stop doing this. So when y'all decide to uh, sponsor Nug Nug, when y'all throw up that Nug Nug back, when well, he knock on your door, all musty. No, come morning time, he need that PB and J. This is a good starter kit for him. PB and J in the morning, two, three loose cigarettes. You know, five bucks. You know, uh, try to coax him to at least shower or put some type of water to his face or body or nether regions. Try to, but he most likely won't. And, you know, do your best to say, hey, now when you come home, it's going to be some fried chicken, some fried pork chop, mashed potatoes, some way for you, some uh, Kraft mac and cheese. Coax him back before the late hours because you could lose Nug Nug to the next uh, desperate woman, don't you see? So you got to get Nug Nug back. It's a lot. So PB and J in the morning, you know, if he decide to come home, take a nap after, you know, losing that $5 in a little dice game, give him a little ramen noodle. And coax them back with some good old, you know, high cholesterol. Yeah, that's when you stand up and we see your full body. Okay. Oh gosh, I'm so nervous. 
Um, are you in great shape? It's about to be a mom of eight. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So Shirley, Shirley, Shirley in? Yeah, Shirley in. Shirley in. Shirley in. There you go. So was your last relationship your child's father? Yes. Okay, you don't have to answer, but I'm going to ask. When's the last time you was intimate with someone? Oh gosh, yeah. I, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> no problem. So why do you think you're single, Shirley Ann? Uh, I think I'm single because, oh gosh. Ah, I feel like guys just don't want to take me serious because of the amount of kids that I have and because I'm just a kind, loving, sweet person. I fall very easily. <laughs> Well, this is what I've been told because I had to dissect this with men because I do feel like women are definitely more understanding if a guy has multiple children and it's it's really um, double standards, right? Yeah. The unfortunate thing is if a guy has eight kids and mm -hmm. attractive, I had a guy on my show that had four kids by four different women, had a gun in the live and women still wanted his IG, right? It just... <laughs> It is what it is. And what's what I've learned from hosting this show. A lot of times the children don't live with the men. So women feel as though even though he has multiple baby mamas, multiple kids, they're not dealing with the kids on a regular basis. A man that is a provider has to consider taking care of you and what you come along with. Uh -huh. So basically any man has that, the kind of man I think you are desiring now has to be willing to, you know, let's say live in a household one day with oh, you. Long story short, he got to be willing to deal with 11 people. Yo, know, eight kids, two baby daddies, and you. And this is a provider, man. That's a headache. We done said it before, before over and over again. Like I said, she did the Kendra Cam there. She's still in shape. So, you know, she's going to keep getting what she want, which is more baby, because she can keep that thing tight. And y'all women out there ought to be ashamed. Y'all ought to be ashamed. This woman right here, eight kids deep, still got that thing tight. Salute. That's probably the only silver lining in this is that she ain't all blowed out. So she gonna mess around and get to 12 kids because she putting all her peers to shame. I keep saying it. All y'all good women, all y'all good marriage-minded women, all y'all marriage-minded CEO boss chicks, too, I guess. Why y'all keep letting this common woman take y'all man just because she know how to stay in shape? Men are visual. That shall never change. It shall never change. And I hope as y'all are learning is for the survival of the species because you could be too big to help give birth to a healthy child. Do y'all not understand this? Y'all so lazy and irresponsible. because That's what it is. That y'all always, oh, you know, yeah, we all know you could be too skinny, but you could be too big. There, There is no, like, okay, we know you can get too skinny, but ain't no way you can get too big. Ain't no way you can be 700, and that ain't. Come on, man. Y'all got to stop letting this sister put y'all to shame just because she know how to keep her body tight. She is bad. And she hit on it. Took a minute. She had to pull out herself. Kendra said, why you think you're single? I don't know. Uh, well, uh, come on now. I said, spit it out. Spit it out. You can do it. Uh, I think it's because I the eight kids and all. There you go. It's like burping the baby. And once they, but there you go. And they won't take me seriously. And 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 you know, and I fall. I fall so fast. You fall for that meat fast. Huh. You fall for fast. You all wound up. See, here's the thing. Some of y'all sisters got that black snake moan, and that's just what it is. Y'all need to add to a heat register to keep y'all from jumping up on something. For real, y'all do. Y'all need to stop the cap. Stop the cap. All sisters like this, and all she need is an excuse to go ahead and roll around in the sack. All she needs is an excuse, and, and it's going to pop off because she falls easy and hard. That is that is just cold for I'm a 304. And that's why some men, what I've been told from men, why sometimes they kind of push yeah. back on it because do they have, A, enough money to take right. care of you and then your eight children? Do they already have kids? 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a big house you have to have. Yeah. To take care of you and, you know, so that's why I, I don't know, because I know you said that you feel like men don't take you serious. I think it's just, can they literally afford to take care of you and your children? Yeah, and I understand that, Kendra. Like, okay, so recently I was talking to an ex, um, and I just feel like he's not taking me serious, be maybe because of my children. I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't understand it. But it's like at the same time, he's wanting to pursue a relationship, but he's very inconsistent with his communication. And with the job that he has, his hours are like so crazy. But it's like, I, I work too. I work and I'm in school right now. And then I had to be a mom to eight of my children and I still find time to try and communicate with him. So, I mean, I don't know. I just don't get it. I often think like, is it because of my eight children? I don't know. Okay. Well, why would a guy be lucky to be with you? Um, I'm a great cook. <laughs> I'm an awesome mom. Um, I'm very mo romantic. Uh, I come with my own stuff, my own house, car. Um, Can I ask you a question? Place. This is, I'm just curious. What kind of car do you drive to fit eight kids? Oh, I have a 2019 Ford Expedition. OK, all the kids can fit in it. Yes, yes, yes. OK, because you got car seats, too. Where I'm going to sit. If you get all your kids where I'm going to sit, then. You see, so now we got, you see what I'm saying? So always going to be a problem. Just when you thought you landed that plane. Now where I'm going to sit. Oh, you know what? Uh, we'll strap you down on the uh, on the gate up top. You know what I mean? Where I'm going to sit. Y'all ain't think about that. She off the hook. She talking about some brother was there and all he want is the box. And he keep, you know, swinging and moving. And she wonder why he won't stick around, and take her serious. She think it may be because it gets possible. It's possible, it could be because she ain't kids. That's a possibility. But she ain't sure. She ain't pinpointing the gaff. You gotta understand. She think it could be. It could have something to do with the eight dwarves, the eight children running around. Who knows? Could be. So, so this woman, she like the firefighter or a plumber going to check a leak, and is spraying her right in the face. And she said, I think this is possible. This could be the league. I, this could be it. You know, spray it right in the face. <laughs> this could be it. Not show. Sure. She said, I'm talking to one of my exes. This, every time she opens her mouth, it gets worse. <laughs> I don't, see, can you understand? I'm talking to one of my exes, right? And I just feel like he don't take me seriously because. He had hit me up, and he act like he's trying to pursue a relationship. No, he is not trying to pursue a relationship. He is trying to pursue that box. That is it. He just trying to see if that box is currently available. You keep bull jab with the bull jab, and he move on. He might come back a couple weeks later. Hey, that box available, and you might or might not give it in. Then y'all think y'all mess now. Now y'all think y'all working something out just because he came over to work you out, and now you talking about he inconsistent. Wrong. Nug Nug is very consistent. Ain't much inconsistent about Nug Nug. He consistently Nug Nug, and he consistently letting you down. For the men, I would say do not be dealing with women having kids in between, like I explained earlier. If she move on and have a kid by another man, brother, let it go. And then brothers, and then here we are. This whole situation could have been avoided if y'all would have started following. We're going to come up with a name before it, like cart before the horse nomics or something. I don't know. But if y'all to follow the chart, A, the first man who had a child by her, if y'all separate it, go your separate, live your life. Because it B, the man who came in is we don't even recommend you being stepdaddy. So that could have been avoided if you got some consulting, right? So that man would have been avoided. And then B, you would have never had to double back and then have a kid by a woman who then already had a kid by another man. We cut you see what I'm saying? We got solutions. Y'all say what y'all want, right? And then for the woman, if you would have simply held on to your womb until this man married you. You see what I'm saying? There's so much here. But we're going to put the book out. We're going we're gonna to start consulting. It's coming. Because this all could have been avoided. But the truth is, the grim reality is, you know, women like this, 
And obviously we use, you know, these term men and women a little loose over here. We're going to do better. This 304 that just was on display and all the nug nugs that, that interacted with her, they weren't looking for success or desirable outcome. They were simply looking to feed their most primitive urge. And that was rolling around with this goofy 304 here. And all she wanted was what, what Nug Nug had, which was hard meat and hard time. That's it. That's all they wanted from each other.